So did you know that Roblox has been around since 2006 and they have just now released an update with occlusion calling and what that exactly is you can think of it as a system that's not going to render any geometry that's outside of the view frame and it's a huge optimization feature which I'm going to overview in Roblox Studio right now but as usual leave a like and subscribe to support the channel and let's get into the video. So let me just firstly enable the beta feature by going to the file then beta features and then scrolling down to the occlusion calling which says enable software occlusion calling in studio use wireframe to see what it calls so let's just enable this one press on save and restart studio and for example i'm just going to use some 3d assets and just put them into this place and let's just imagine that we have well this so normally nothing is really going to happen now since we have a big open area so let me actually also get some kind of a wall and now we have a way of objects getting occluded by something and how to see if the occlusion calling actually works would be as simple as going to the view tab and seeing it on the wireframe rendering where if i enable this option right now we are able to see most of these assets but if i were to move for example behind this wall right here you can see them disappearing and now the engine doesn't have to render all of that geometry because it's basically not visible and i'm just going to do a quick presentation on occlusion calling while going alongside this wall since there is going to be the window and the door that we can see the objects through but it's basically just going to go like this And this is also going to work without the wireframe preview, but this one is basically only to see the occlusion calling effect. Where if I go alongside the same way, we are basically just going to see this as if nothing else was happening. But the only thing that you as the player is going to notice with the occlusion calling feature is going to be a boost in performance. And you can even see this being pretty accurate when for example hiding all of the can geometry where they are currently invisible. And one thing I would need to mention with this update is that right now it's only available in Roblox Studio. And I want to mention that more later in the dev forum overview, but only few selected games are going to have this feature enabled. And now just to show occlusion calling a little bit more now, I'm going to go into a different place. And it's going to be the modern city template, which you can see is taking a little bit time to load. But if I were to just do a playtest, then go to the wireframe view again and just enable my free camera, this is going to be the best presentation of occlusion calling. And I'm also just going to do this just so I can have the best preview as I can. But you can see some flickering basically, and that's because the engine is basically checking if an object is visible or not every frame. But for example, the geometry in this building, like if I were to just go to the workspace and get all of the interior assets from this building, this is going to be how much of the geometry the occlusion calling feature is not going to render just from this building alone. And all of these assets, they aren't like only chairs and tables. You have even the candle models, like the plates right here and a very detailed environment. And why am I in a car right now? Anyways, and you also have all of these different buildings that are not going to be rendered. And you can probably imagine that this is going to be a huge boost in performance. Since if I just zoom out, this place has a lot of assets. And right now it's only going to render the things in my viewport that I am seeing right now. And I can for example disable the occlusion calling feature. And just to compare it without the occlusion calling, right now with the feature enabled, I have around 150 or 160 FPS. But if I were to go to the beta features again, disable occlusion calling and restart studio, right now the frame count is going to be way lower, around 800. And I'm basically just sitting in the same place. But just to give you a quick idea on how much occlusion calling is doing, I'm going to enable the wireframe rendering now. And previously there was way less geometry. And even with the wireframe enabled, my FPS is dropping even lower. And again for a comparison, I have 140 FPS with the occlusion calling enabled in the wireframe mode. So almost double of my FPS without occlusion calling. So yeah, overall this is going to be a pretty huge update whenever it comes out. And I would also need to apologize really quickly because I kind of lied with the title of this video. And this is going to be an educational bit now, but I said that it took 10 years for Roblox to add occlusion calling, right? But the truth is that occlusion calling is an algorithm from a technology called a hidden surface determination. And the first algorithm of the sort was called Painter's Algorithm, which was actually invented in 1972, so the occlusion calling ranges to 1980s. 
So in reality, it took Roblox around, I would say, 20 years. But I mostly just wanted to compare this to other game engine occlusion calling features, where Unreal Engine 4 had hardware assigned occlusion calling added in 2014, and Unity 3 had in a building occlusion calling feature added in 2010. But yeah, that's what I was basically just basing it off of. So that's everything for the scale of the updates, and now for the bit more boring part, I'm going to go to the dev forum, where we have the studio beta introducing occlusion calling where the Roblox stuff is saying that they are basically excited to announce this feature and that occlusion calling is an optimization that prevents rendering objects that are hidden behind other objects and it doesn't require any work from you. The engine will automatically detect which objects don't need to be rendered and it's currently in production in only few experiences and we basically need to wait for them to release it to everyone since this is only a studio beta for now. And here is a note saying that enabling the beta feature will only enable it in studio. But continuing, we have a preview of what the occlusion calling actually is. And this is a default preview. And this is the wireframe preview. And here is with the occlusion calling. So we can see that all of the furniture, as well as the buildings in the background, are not going to be rendered, since they are not currently visible. And here is on the how to use, which we need to enable this as a beta feature, which I already shown as well as the other thing which is going to the view, and then the wireframe rendering. And here is an explanation on how everything works, as well as a way to compare it by enabling and disabling the beta feature. But now there are some limitations with occlusion calling, and here they are saying that it only works on meshes and parts, excluding avatars for now. It cannot call the following objects at this time, and you have avatars, terrain, lights, VFXs and user interface. So avatars is pretty self-explanatory, the terrain is kind of understandable since it's geometry generated on voxel data, the lights are kind of understandable too, since you would basically need to render the whole volume of where the light is shining, and there also might be some problems with for example shadows. Then the VFXs which would be for particles, beams, trails and so on, and UI for surface and billboard GUIs. And I think these two already don't render behind certain objects, like for example glass, so I'm guessing that there might be some interference. And here they are saying that they intend to extend the occlusion calling technology to cover more object types in the future. And here is a performance tab where the performance benefits of occlusion calling can vary from one place to another and between different viewpoints within the same place as well. And viewpoints with a lot of occluded objects will benefit the most since we can avoid rendering those objects, for example places with interior or buildings where objects are often hidden behind walls. And for the other viewpoints, they may not see performance benefits since there are not many objects to call. For example, places with wide open areas such as an arena. And a heart emoji with made with love by the engine team. Also saying please let us know if you experience any issues with occlusion calling in the studio beta. For instance, please report if your experience runs slower on test devices. As well as if some objects don't appear and you don't see them blink in and out. And providing example RBX files are most helpful to let us fix issues quickly and the RBXL meaning the Roblox place file model. But yeah, that will basically be everything for the occlusion curling update. So as usual, leave a like and subscribe to support the channel, and also check out my Patreon page. But yeah, thank you guys for watching, hope everyone had a nice day, and see you guys.